Hi, I'm Mike Ryan. In our series on turquoise cutting, we saw in part one how we would select from a group of nuggets as we were going to choose what we were going to cut. We also saw in that video uh, an overview of the cutting shop setup and what the steps were in the cutting process. In part two, we saw how we would preview those nuggets to see exactly how we were going to cut them. And we saw how the slabbing process went on the saw to cut those nuggets, slice those nuggets, and then how we would prep those on the wheel to get them ready for the dopping process. So today we're going to put some turquoise slabs on to some dop sticks, and then we're gonna cut some turquoise. So let's do it. I'm gonna give you an example here of um, how we would dop an existing cabochon that we wanna rework a little bit. We have this cabochon here, and I showed this earlier when we were selecting the nuggets that we were going to use. And in this instance, what we have here, and I think you can see it right there, you can see some, what we call undercutting. That's where the matrix is below the surface of the turquoise formation and creates these little pits in there. And you can see we have a couple of them along here. We have another one right here. And it's just not making the finish as nice as we may want it. So what I'm going to do here is re-dop this cab, and then we can hopefully refinish it and get a little better finish on it. So I've heated up the um, I've heated up the wax. As you can see here, I took the old wax off of this dop stick. So now what I need to do is we're going to put some wax on here and then we're going to put this onto the cab and then submerge it in some water. Now while we're waiting for that cab to heat up a little bit, I wanted to show you an example of some chalk turquoise. This is very crumbly turquoise. You can see here, well, it's not going to break apart, but it's very, very soft. It's very pitted. When you feel it, it just has a very chalky surface to it. And if this turquoise were going to be cut and were going to be used in jewelry, it would need to be treated. Um, one of the things about cutting, the lower the grade of the turquoise, the harder it is to cut it because if a turquoise is very hard, um, it's, it's going to be able to cut and polish much, much better. So let's see how we're doing here. Yeah, this is starting to warm up quite a bit. When that stone gets hot, you can burn your fingers. So sometimes I'll wear some gloves. We see we have our, our uh, plate here that's going to help us roll this thing to fashion this. So let's see what we can do here. One of the problems is I don't have my butane um, torch. I just never made it down here. I've got to get another one. And uh, th that's what I would use when I did this. I would, and then roll this. Then I would torch that, get it real soft, and then apply it. But we're just going to see if we can't uh, get this on there quick enough that it will, uh, it will adhere. So here we go. Let's see if we can do this. So here I've got it on. I want to get it as perfectly even as I can. If you don't get it even, it's not going to be symmetrical. 
So they have to be on there as even as they possibly can. So here I dipped it into the water, cool that, and here you see we have the cab has been dopped on there. Now it's not probably as even as I would like on there, but that's as close as we got for this demonstration. So then we'll just stick this over here. And then when we start to do our cutting, we will have it ready to go on the stick. All right, now after, after cutting the tabs earlier, we now have let this one dry. Remember this was this nice, oops, wrong way, this way, this nice uh, Hubei cab uh, that we've now sliced. It's dried out. We're gonna ready to put it on the dopping stick. And we have the Red Mountain and the Rattlesnake. So what I'm gonna do, as you can see, I put on a glove here because we're gonna heat up these uh, slabs in order to get them to adhere to the dopping stick. And we're going to get those going there. You can see I've got my dopping sticks ready here. I've taken off the the old um, the old uh, from the old sticks when it hardens on there. I've taken that off, and we're recycling that there in the in the pot. And I had to select the right size of stick. Now you just make these dopping sticks by getting some dowel rods and and cutting them different sizes. And you know, we can get as, we can get real tiny here. I've got some real, some much smaller ones here for the little ones. The, the littler the cabs are, the, the harder they are to cut. The other thing I didn't mention is that all the cutting we're doing on this is called freeform. You can also do calibrated cabs and, and that's where you have a template and then you take a little etching tool, which is just a piece of steel, a steel stylus, that is harder than the turquoise and you will use that template to um, outline the size of the calibrated cab that you want. Now when you do that it takes a lot longer and there's a lot more waste so a lot of cutters don't like doing that. A lot of jewelers do want that because their customers love when they get the calibrated cabs but we see that fewer and fewer instances of that in the marketplace. So let's see how these are heating up here. Yeah, they're coming along a little bit here. I don't, they don't have to get, get just, just nice and warm, not really super, super hot. But we want those pores of the stone to be open so that when you apply the, the, the wax, it adheres and it'll hold that, uh, that stone to your dopping stick. So we'll get our, our trusty plate out. I really like this trick that, uh, that Bruce Mead taught me. It's a nice way to get the, the wax on there in a uniform way when you uh, apply it to the, to the turquoise. Oh, I gotta get my water, get my water ready to immerse that in there. And uh, I think I'll just replace the dopping sticks here. Get the water right there. I'll just move things around a little bit here. Okay, once again, I got some water. I don't want any water on that plate. Get that off of there. All right. So here we're going to get started here. So I'm going to stir up this wax a little bit, get it nice and even. Okay, now I got the wax on there. I'm going to form this on this and then take this cap and put this right on there. Now, as I said before, you want to make sure you get it 
as even as you possibly can. And you got to go from all the different sides to make sure you're getting it on there evenly. Because if you don't, then when you form it, it's not going to come out in a nice fashion. So we'll stick that into the water. And there we go. And we'll just go on with the rest of these here. See how I have to keep turning it because you think it's even one way and then you turn it the next and it's not even at all. So this can be kind of frustrating when you're trying to get this all on there nice and nice and even. I'm using a little bigger dopping stick on these larger slabs of the of the Hubei. And we'll get the last one here. Right in the center there is where you want to get that into the slab and then get it as even as you can on that stick. That's pretty good. All right. So there we go. Now we've got these uh, all on the sticks. And uh, we're going to start cutting some turquoise. Okay, for the sake of uh, time on this video, because if we were to go through cutting each and every one of these calves, we'd have a very, very long video. So what I want to do is I've, I've already um, cleaned up this calf a little bit. This was the one that was already cut, and we just wanted to go in and try to clean up some of the pits that were in there. So I've already gone through and done some of this. I'm just going to duplicate so you can see the steps that we went through as we moved across from the heavier grits to the lighter grits. And then we move over here to the polishing wheels. And then finally we end up on a very thin uh, flat lap on the end there. But again, it's just going to take a lot of time. So here, let me just show you again what we've got of the, the techniques. So we just go through and we're basically going to go across. I've already done this one. We go across here, forming up where the bezel's going to be. We go a little bit here on the edge. We go around like this. We're gonna do the same thing on this one here. On this wheel, and then I move over here to the polishing wheel. You're really going to have to spend a lot of time on these. Just a few passes on this will we'll go ahead and get the uh, get the finer polish on the stone. And then the final one.
right, so there we go. We've got that looking uh, much better than it was before when we got this thing, uh, some of these pits out of there. I'm going to put a final polish on it, and I'll show you how we do that. So here on the uh, the end of the of the wheel of the genie, we have this flat lap here, and this is just uh, like a leather piece of leather here, and it's got this uh, polish that's been infused into it. So I'm just going to uh, to run this over this, polish this up a little bit. You notice here the spitter we've got it at an angle, so we'll be getting some material, uh, some water onto that. Uh, onto that pad. So here we go, and I'm just going to kind of reach in here. I don't really have a good angle on this right now, but you can see how I'm just going to run this around like this a little bit. So we're getting a, a better polish on that. We have a lot of different wheels that we can use on this one. This is a, uh, uh, these are called Nova discs. This is a 14,000 grit. And this is a uh, cerium, a cerium grit. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and change this out and let's, uh, let's use a little of this. So I switched out that wheel and we got it some uh, some water on there. So let's go and, and try this again with this. And again, my angle's off a little bit. So there we got a little a little bit more polish on there. So I'm going to go ahead and it's going to take a while. We're going to cut the rest of these tabs. And then um, at the end, we'll take a look and see what the final result is. Well, we see the results of the cutting. I went ahead and uh, cut and polished these caps. We'll start with the bad news first. Um, and unfortunately, one of the truths of, of turquoise mining and turquoise cutting is that you have to remove a lot of dirt to find a little bit of turquoise and you have to cut a lot of cabs to find some real beauties. And uh, we see what happens here with the rattlesnake and the red mountain. What often happens is you start out with your slab and you're cutting, 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 and you're searching, searching for that turquoise and everything just ends up in mud. You just end up with, in this instance, these are three carrots. This one, there's hardly any turquoise there at all to, to really amount to anything. Very, very soft matrix really kind of a bust on the rattlesnake. A little bit of color in the in the Red Mountain, but again, we, we lost so much to waste. It was just a really a, a, a difficult cut. On the two that we had the highest hopes for, we really came out with some really spectacular results here. Uh, this one we have uh, 18 carats on the left and 16 carats on the right. We got a really nice, deep, uh, very high-grade, dark web hube result from that. So, you know, again, it's you, you put a lot of work into this and, and you get results like this and it makes all the other failures well worth it. And then we see the one that we redid here that came in at 24 carats. And again, just a very, very beautiful, high-grade high to gem-grade um, a look for Chinese dark web turquoise. So I hope uh, you've enjoyed this series on turquoise cutting. 
Maybe somebody will get inspired like I did and go out and pick up the hobby. Just remember what Bob Brusha told me when I got started. And he told me, Mike, it's a lot of fun to cut 15 cabs, but it's a lot of work to cut 300. <laughs>